from multiple supposed murders in broad daylight to a literal river full of blood, criminals on the run caught in 360 degrees, and even the remains of a man missing for a decade. You're about to learn about some of the most disturbing and unsettling crimes and mysteries that were solved with the use of some revolutionary technology. No, not DNA analysis or facial reconstruction, Google Maps. Yes, the thing you use to get directions whenever you're lost or to find the nearest 24-hour McDonald's when you need a bite after a long night out. That same app has been a useful tool for police investigators and online sleuths in uncovering the truth behind some of the truly strange discoveries that can be stumbled upon while looking through Google Maps satellite images. And it's even helped solve some cases that long ago ran cold. These are just 11 of the most disturbing mysteries we could find, and they were solved thanks to good old Google Maps. Starting us off strong, were there really images on Google Maps of a killer disposing of the body of someone they just murdered? Well, according to one poster on Reddit, there certainly seemed to be. In 2013, user NCAV uploaded a post to r WTF displaying a picture of a dock in Beatrix Park near the heart of the city of Elmira, Holland. The image taken from Google Maps seemed to show a trail of blood leading from the water covering the woodwork of the jetty. There was also a look to be one or two people present along with a dark shape on the surface of the octagonal dock, with noticeably more blood around it. We're not speaking from experience here, but it sure looked like two people about to dispose of a body in the water. And cementing the idea that this was a gory crime caught in broad daylight was the Reddit user's caption of the image, a murder near my house on Google Maps, link in comments. Of course, if any of you have spent any time on Reddit in the past, then you'll no doubt know to take some of the things posted on certain subreddits with a grain of salt, or maybe several large fistfuls. It can be hard to determine what is a genuine story and an attempt by the original poster to embellish the truth or outright lie in order to collect some of that coveted Reddit gold. Whether or not OP actually believed the scene was something more nefarious, Reddit detectives got together and managed to determine that the real culprit was, in fact, a dog. Zooming in on the Google Maps image, internet sleuths were able to determine the outline of a dog who had gotten soggy after a swim in the lake, the water running off their fur leading to what looked like a bloody trail at a distance. The dog's owner even came across the image and found it hilarious that some online decided to think it was the scene of a murder. Oh, and for any of you who were wondering, the dog's name was Rama. But this is far from the only Google Maps mystery to take place near a body of water or to involve what looked like blood. Remember we mentioned a literal river of blood? While it might sound like a biblical plague, in 2007, the lake of Lago Vermelho caught the eye of people online. Why? Well, because it looked like what had come pouring out of the elevator at the Overlook Hotel in The Shining. Located in Sadr City, Iraq, near Baghdad, the Google Maps camera crew, you know the ones, those car-mounted 360-degree cameras, they're pretty hard to miss, they captured images of Lago Vermelho running through the city. The lake is estimated to be about 500 feet wide and runs for around half a mile, separated into sections by concrete walls that provide people safe crossings over the water. That doesn't sound all that notable, right? Well, the middle section of the lake was quite a worrying shade of red. And once the images made their way online, it led to rampant speculation about what could have caused this. It certainly didn't seem that a dog was responsible for this one. Theories ranged from plausible to downright outlandish, with some of the more wild speculators believing the city had been the site of crimes and that this had led to blood contaminating the water. But that's more likely scaremongering than anything else. After all, it would take a lot of blood to fill a lake the size of Lago Vermelho. Well, again, not that we here at the Infographic Show would know from personal experience. More scientific theories pointed to the possibility that the presence of certain types of algae and bacteria could have been responsible for the water turning blood red. That's not unheard of either. Over in Iran, a similar thing happened. Their largest lake, Lake Urmia, was captured on a NASA satellite, changing from red to a green shade that looked closer to a giant crime scene. This was thanks to the high concentration of Duna Liela, as the lake's warm water and high concentration of salt provided the perfect breeding ground for this type of algae. The Halobacteriaceae family of bacteria were also partly responsible since they used their red pigment to absorb sunlight and convert it to energy, thus changing the water's hue to a bloodier shade. So was the same thing happening in Iraq in Lago Vermelo? Not quite, it's actually never been officially confirmed what made the water run the color of blood. One source claimed it was due to there being a number of slaughterhouses in the area that had been dumping animal carcasses 
and excess blood into the lake. Other claims pointed to raw sewage being diverted through the lake, or that the red color could have been the result of the water treatment process. While none of these explanations has ever been verified, they sure seem more plausible than the whole mass murder theory. But adding to the mystery, now whenever you view that lake on Google Earth, the waters of Lago Vermelo have seemingly returned to their original color. Maybe blood isn't thicker than water after all. From blood in the water to blood on the hands of a career criminal, we bet you didn't know that Google Maps was instrumental in helping track down a notorious mafia killer, convicted murderer, and one of the most wanted criminals in Italy, Gioacchino Gamino, broke out of Rabibia prison in Rome in 2002. For 20 years, he managed to evade capture by Italian police and eluded investigators by changing his name and even cutting all ties with his own family. So imagine his surprise when Google Maps, of all things, led to the authorities once again catching up to him. While living life on the run as a fugitive, Gamino, who had been awaiting trial on murder charges when he escaped, was convicted in his absence in 2014. A European arrest warrant was issued for the man, considered one of Italy's most dangerous fugitives at the time. Giacchino Gamino was believed to be connected with a Stita clan in a town east of Agrigento, Sicily, called Campobella di Licanta. Stita, meaning star in Sicilian, consisted of mobsters who had broken away from and rebelled against the Cosa Nostra, the Sicilian Mafia, in the 80s. One turf war between the Stita and the Cosa Nostra in the 90s left 200 people dead. 20 years after his escape, in 2022, an image captured on Google Maps was discovered that seemed to show two men having a conversation outside a fruit and vegetable shop called El Huerto de Manu, roughly translated to Manu's Garden, and Galapagar, a town in Spain near Madrid. One of the men bore a striking resemblance to Joaquino Gamino. Authorities had tracked their fugitive to Spain, but this seemingly innocuous Google Street View image was the key to pinpointing his precise location. Digging a little deeper, investigators came across a listing for a local Italian restaurant named La Cocina de Manu, or Manu's Kitchen. On a Facebook page for the restaurant was a photo of one of their chefs, a man supposedly going by the name Manuel, standing next to a wood-burning pizza oven, but the noticeable scar on the left side of his chin was identical to the one that Gamino had, and sure enough, Manuel and Gamino were one in the same person. He had been living in Galapagar for decades under a fake name. He'd even gotten married and had been working at the restaurant, avoiding detection the whole time. Ironically, the menu for Manu's kitchen even had a dish on it called Sina Siciliana, translating to Sicilian dinner. Hardly subtle, but it's not like the 61-year-old Gamino had been expecting the authorities to spot him on Google Maps of all places. Spotting a mafia fugitive with the help of Google Maps is certainly a lucky needle in a haystack. However, Gamino's case is far from the only one that's been solved with the help of the online navigation tool. On October 11, 2006, Davy Lee Niles disappeared from his hometown of Byron Township, Michigan. He'd last been seen leaving his regular local watering hole, Jake's Bar, even having met an old friend there, only to leave abruptly. This was because, shortly before the time of his disappearance, Davy had recently been diagnosed with both cancer and depression and was dealing with a lot of intense emotional turmoil over his health. That night, though, the 72-year-old man never made it home. Distraught, Davy's family would keep up the search for him for what must have been an excruciating five years. Eventually, in 2011, they published an obituary for him, deciding to come to terms with the painful reality that whatever had happened to Davy, he likely was no longer alive. Little did any of them know at the time, they could have found exactly where he was had they just checked Google Maps. Unbeknownst to Davy's family, the man's car could be seen submerged in a nearby lake on Google Maps. Nobody noticed at all. In fact, it took until 2015, nearly a decade after Davy's disappearance, for someone to spot him. Brian Hausman, a local man who'd been decorating a Christmas tree outside of the Cook Funeral Home in Byron Center, had been up in a lift when he noticed the sunken car in the pond. Unaware that he'd just discovered the answer to a nine-year-long mystery, Hausman informed the Kent County Sheriff's Department who dispatched their dive team to the scene. Once police divers had confirmed that there was indeed a vehicle in the pond, wrecking crews hauled the mud-covered car out of the water and discovered the skeletal remains of Davy Lee Niles in the driver's seat. It took some time for the police to check the body's teeth against Davy's dental records in order to confirm his identity, but uncovering his wallet in the car pointed to a clear picture that it was the missing man. Perhaps even more of a kicker than the fact that the car had been visible from Google Maps almost the entire time was that the pond where it was found was only half a mile from the bar 
where Davy had last been seen alive. As upsetting as the ordeal had been for his relatives, Davy's family were relieved to finally get closure on his disappearance, and glad to have him home, even if it only served to confirm what they had long suspected to have happened to him. While it's never been confirmed exactly how Davy ended up sinking in the lake inside his car, the police have never suspected foul play, chalking it up most likely to being an accident rather than anything more nefarious. Since then, in something of a happy ending to the story, the area where Davy was recovered has been renamed to the Davy Lee Miles Memorial Park in his honor. It's gotta be a frightening moment when you seemingly stumble across a crime scene on Google Maps, especially if all you're doing is using those satellite images to look around your own local area. We know you've done it. Either looked up your own address or even decided to be a little nosy just to see how big that pool in your neighbor's backyard is. But imagine flicking down your street in Google Maps and seeing a body. You'd be alarmed. Chances are most of you would never have seen a real dead body outside of movies unless you were raised with unrestricted internet access and were traumatized by stumbling onto LiveLeak. Well, one quiet street in Worcester, England was whipped into a frenzy back in 2010 when it looked like the dead body of a child was lying in the road. A pretty disturbing sight to say the least. The image seems to show a small girl with brown hair lying flat on the sidewalk with both arms at her sides and one leg dangling over the curb. It even looks like her shoes were knocked off, perhaps by the force of a speeding car. As it just so happened, one of the cars responsible for capturing Google Maps Street View images happened to be passing down the residential street at that exact moment, and captured pictures of the supposed body as they went by. The sight of the girl's body caused some local residents so much distress that they even attempted to reach out to Google directly, out of concern that a serious crime had been committed. Police launched an investigation into the site of the incident, and quickly discovered the truth. It turned out that the girl in the photos wasn't actually dead, she'd just been playing dead. Although very convincingly, we have to add. The girl in the pictures was 10-year-old Azura Bibawan, and sure enough, in the subsequent images on Google Street View, she could be seen up and about as normal, pulling back to the nearest street corner and then zooming back in in the direction of the body even showed Azura getting back on her feet. She had apparently been trying to prank a friend of hers, having fallen over while they were playing and then deciding to freak her friend out by pretending to be dead. Azura was completely unaware that the Google car was traveling past her at that exact moment. Little did she know that her prank, intended for just her friend, would end up startling half of the street. She was reportedly chuffed, that's British for pleased, to have her photo taken and end up causing a stir on the internet. So much so that Google themselves were prompted to make a statement that their street view cars could, on occasion, inadvertently capture odd moments as they passed by. That statement couldn't be more true, since Azura Bibawan's prank is far from the strangest thing ever spotted on Google Maps. We're heading back to another body of water with this next one, to a bay just south of Copenhagen. Here an image was captured on Google Maps of Peter Madsen entering UC3 Nautilus, the submarine he had built. Oh boy, a story that involves a homemade submarine. This can only end well. Madsen, a Danish entrepreneur, had actually built three submarines, his previous two being named the UC1 Freya and UC2 Kraka, respectively. Overall, he had spent the equivalent of about 200,000 US dollars on the Nautilus alone. It launched on the 10th of August 2017, with the image of Madsen climbing into his latest sub, caught by Google Maps. Yet later that evening, the Nautilus had failed to return to the bay as planned. Although she wasn't in the image taken on Google Maps of Madsen ahead of the submarine's launch, a Swedish journalist named Kim Wall was also on board the Nautilus. Of the two, she would never be seen alive again. A search quickly began for the missing Nautilus submarine, eventually being spotted by a boat. When the vessel got closer though, something seemed to happen to cause the submarine to sink, with Madsen managing to jump free. Picked up by the boat, the man was subsequently arrested. There was one pretty big question hanging in the air. Where the heck was Kim Wall? The police pulled the Nautilus ashore and opened it up only to find that she was not inside. Then, a few days later, a mutilated human torso was found washed up on the Danish coast. Sure enough, it belonged to Kim Wall. Peter Madsen was arrested and charged with negligent homicide. He initially claimed to have dropped Kim off on dry land before the night of the sinking, but then changed his story saying that she died on board after she was accidentally hit on the head by the submarine's heavy hatch. He claimed that it was an accident and that Kim had received a skull fracture when he lost his grip on the submarine's hatch cover as he was holding it open for her. Madsen also said that he'd buried Kim at sea and that a technical fault had caused the Nautilus to sink. In actuality, 
He killed Kim Wall and deliberately sunk the submarine to hide the evidence. Perhaps most harrowing of all was the fact that Madsen had not only mutilated the body but had stabbed Kim's torso multiple times in order to vent out the gases that accumulate after death, as these would enable her remains to float on the water's surface. He'd even tried to make her remains sink to the seabed by fastening them to a piece of metal. The rest of her body was eventually found, along with her clothing and a knife, at the bottom of Koya Bay, also weighed down by metal. This coupled with the disturbing videos of decapitations Madsen was found to have been watching on his computer led to him being found guilty of Kim Wall's murder and being sentenced to life imprisonment. Peter Madsen's hardly the only criminal caught in the act on Google Maps. Not all are caught immediately, as much as they might spend a lot of time in the comfort of thinking they've gotten away scot-free. But with Google Maps on the case, there's quite literally nowhere you can hide forever. In 2011, a woman in Oklahoma City returned to her home to find the place ransacked. As if the discovery wasn't bad enough, it turned out this wasn't just a burglary, it was a terrifying home invasion. She'd returned home while the perpetrators were still in the house. Rather than fleeing the scene, they then proceeded to accost the woman at gunpoint for almost an hour until they finished robbing her. Fortunately, she wasn't harmed any further once they left, but the situation had been harrowing. There had been moments during the incident where she was convinced the assailants would shoot her before they left. Over the three years that followed, the two men who must have thought they'd gotten away with their crime were completely oblivious that they'd been spotted by a crucial witness. Yeah, you guessed it, it was Google Maps. And Google doesn't forget. In a way, it's kind of like a real-life software-only Robocop. One of their Street View cars had been mapping out the neighborhood in Oklahoma City on that exact day in 2011 that the home invasion took place. And sure enough, it caught an image of the two robbers moments before they'd been about to commit the crime. However, it wasn't until 2014 that the image eventually became a key part of identifying the suspects. The victim had by this point given up hope that the duo would be found and brought to justice, until a friend and neighbor sent her an image from Google Maps. They had apparently been looking around the neighborhood on Google Street View and had spotted a pair of men she didn't recognize as being from the local area. In the image, they were just walking down the street in broad daylight, moments away from entering the house and holding the unsuspecting victim at gunpoint. Despite Google having a policy for blurring out people's faces in all the images they collect for Google Maps and its Street View function, for obvious privacy reasons, the woman who'd suffered the harrowing home invasion was able to readily identify the pair as the men who had ransacked her home and threatened her life, thanks to clearly being able to see their clothing and bodily builds from the Google Maps image. While we couldn't find any updates to the story, the men were considered at large by Oklahoma City Police back in 2014, and they put out a call to the public asking anyone who could help identify the men to come forward. Here's hoping that someone did and they got some kind of karma for what they put their victim through. Let's bounce from Oklahoma back to the UK for this next one. We're not sure what it is about that strange little island, but we seem to have found a strange number of these Google Maps mysteries that originate from there. Like the axe murder, caught on camera by a passing Google Street View car. That's right, believe it or not. That was the horrific scene that unfolded in Leith, Edinburgh. The Google car managed to capture the whole attack in all its disturbing detail and from multiple angles thanks to that 360-degree camera mounted on the roof. A man, Gary Kerr, emerged on Guile Street in Leith brandishing what looked to be a pickaxe handle. In one of the images approaching the screen, Kerr could be seen seemingly attacking another man, Dan Thompson, who was already face down on the road between the two parked cars as the Google Street View car approached. As it passed directly next to the assailant and his victim, Kerr turned and looked directly at the passing car-mounted camera, still holding the weapon in hand. The image clearly captured Dan Thompson knocked flat on the ground, totally still, where he stayed as the Street View car passed by, capturing the last image of Gary Kerr seemingly leaving the scene while Dan lay lifeless in the road. The collection of images, even when viewed without context, are nothing short of chilling. The images of the incident were captured in August 2012 and were eventually discovered by a member of the public who raised the alarm with local police. From there, the authorities were able to trace Kerr back to a car repair shop that he had worked at, the business itself having been owned by Dan Thompson, his apparent victim. Upon arriving at the shop, the police were quick to question Gary Kerr and Dan Thompson. That's right, Dan was still alive, and the two of them had successfully tricked and startled both local police and people online. In what they described as a spur-of-the-moment decision, the pair of mechanics had decided to play an elaborate prank as the Google Street View car approached. 
In the short few seconds they had before they missed their opportunity, Dan threw himself on the ground and Gary retrieved the pickaxe handle from the garage. It had been such an innocuous moment that the two of them had completely forgotten about the incident until the photos were uploaded to Google Maps and the police came calling. Fortunately, they saw the funny side and even suspected the whole thing to have been a joke beforehand, as it was revealed that one of the officer's colleagues even frequently had his car serviced by Gary and Dan. It's good to know that what might seem like horrific acts of violence captured on Google Maps often just turns out to be harmless if a little disturbing pranks. But what about the actual violent crimes that Google Maps has helped solve? On July 30th, 2010, two men, Edgar Lopez and Pablo Gutierrez Guzman, had been enjoying a sociable drink in their yard in Richland County, South Carolina. They then had a conversation with Leslie Todd Parvin, a 40-year-old armed forces veteran who had allegedly solicited services from Edgar Lopez. Apparently, Edgar had backed out of the arrangement, leading to an argument between the three men. Things became heated, and Parvin then produced a firearm and shot the two men before fleeing the scene, shaving his head, destroying his gun, and fleeing to Louisiana. Now this was of course a horrific attack, regardless of whatever the dispute between Parvin and his two victims had been over. Neither Edgar nor Pablo deserved to lose their lives over it. The thing that made it tricky for investigators to find Parvin and arrest him for the double murder he committed was that he was actively trying to cover his tracks. A witness who had seen the crime take place reported that Parvin had been driving a green Kia minivan and was even able to provide the police with a partial tag number from the vehicle's license plate. The problem was the authorities investigating the case believed that Parvin would have disposed of the minivan, possibly even leaving Louisiana and having the vehicle destroyed in Texas. They had a witness who described the vehicle, a tag number that matched Parvin to the minivan, but no proof of its existence. Acting on a whim, one of the Richland County deputies of the case searched for Parvin's home address on Google Maps. In the Street View image of the Parvin's family home, the deputy noticed a green minivan parked out front that matched the description of the vehicle given to them by witnesses. Naturally, images from Google Street View weren't taken live, so this provided them with previously recorded proof that the vehicle from the scene of the attack had indeed been at Leslie Todd Parvin's house. In fact, it was his family's minivan. Heading to the Parvin residence, police discovered that their suspect had been returned home to South Carolina, apparently by his father, Leslie Todd Parvin Sr. From there, the double murderer was arrested, despite being uncooperative with police's investigation and would eventually be sentenced to 35 years in prison for the killing of Edgar Lopez and Pablo Gutierrez Guzman. Now that's how Google Maps pictures of a green minivan helped Richland County deputies catch a double murderer. Things got a little heavy on that last one, but to be completely fair, you did click on a video about the most disturbing mystery solved using Google Maps. Let's change gears and talk about one that, while still unnerving in nature, has captured the minds of people for well over a hundred years, the disastrous sinking of the Titanic. Yes, we all know how it played out, and no, before you ask, Google Maps did not help anyone track down the specific iceberg that sank the White Star Line passenger liner on its maiden voyage. But Google Maps did help find where the Titanic ended up. Thanks to Google Maps' satellite imagery, keen-eyed internet users were able to pinpoint the exact location of the ill-fated vessel's ruins. Ahead of the 107th anniversary of the tragic maritime disaster that claimed the lives of more than 1,500 passengers. Before the supposedly unsinkable ship's anniversary on April 15, 2019, Google's cameras were able to locate the wreckage of the ship itself, south of the island of Newfoundland and also near Nova Scotia, Maine, and Vermont, off the Northumberland Strait. The exact coordinates of the ship's final resting place are 41.7325 degrees north and 49.9469 degrees west, which is roughly 13 miles away from where the Titanic's radio operators thought they were on the fateful night that the ship went under. And as if it wasn't tragic enough, this Google Maps-aided discovery shows just how close the doomed passenger liner came to arriving at its planned destination in New York City. Sadly though, even using the exact coordinates and typing them into Google Maps, you'll likely not be able to see the Titanic's ruins for yourself, as the wreckage of the ship, the largest man-made moving object ever built, is currently 12,000 feet beneath the surface of the North Atlantic Ocean, far too deep to be visible to the human eye. And then there are the outlandish claims by some people that they've discovered the ancient sunken city of Atlantis on Google Maps. No, really. An apparent shadow the size of whales was discovered right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, with the nearest country to it being Morocco. Yet, sadly for anyone hoping to become a real-life Milo Thatch, the shapes turned out to be little more than a technical glitch 
caused by a data gathering technique for tracing the sailing paths of boats, from something that likely didn't happen to the ultimate of our disturbing Google Maps mysteries, the case of William Moult. It's a horrifying prospect to think about that sometimes, however rarely, people can just disappear. Whether an accident befalls them while out alone and their body is never recovered, or whether they were intentionally snatched by some opportunistic kidnapper, sadly not everyone who goes missing is found. And for a long time it seemed like that was what happened to William Mould. At the age of 40, William was reported missing from Latana, Florida on November 7, 1997. He'd been on a night out at a club. The last anyone ever heard from him was when he called his girlfriend at around 9.30 that evening, telling her he'd be home soon, only to be proven wrong, as even though William left at around 11 o'clock that night, he would never make his way back. Almost immediately, the police launched a missing persons case in an attempt to track down William's whereabouts, but the case ultimately went cold. And for just over 20 years, there was never any answer about what had happened to him. On August 28, 2019, nearly a full 22 years after the disappearance, a property surveyor had been using Google Earth when they spotted something unusual. Near a housing development in Wellington, Florida, there seemed to be an object beneath the water of a retention pond in Moon Bay Circle. Looking closer, the man who had been a previous resident of the area was shocked to realize what it was. He contacted someone he knew who still lived there and told them what he'd seen. There was a car under the water. Upon hearing this, the second man set off to investigate for himself, flying a drone out over the water to see if this was genuine or if his friend had sent him out on a wild goose chase. And sure enough, there was in fact a car submerged in the pond. Seeing this, the police were called immediately and raced to the scene to investigate. What they found was the same car that William Moult had been driving the fateful night he had seemingly vanished from the face of the earth, with William still inside. The skeleton found in the car was quickly identified by the city coroner as being none other than the missing William Moult, found dead over two decades after he vanished. Although it was nearly impossible to determine what had happened so many years ago, the police assumed that William had lost control of his car and ended up driving into the pond, ultimately drowning when he couldn't escape the sunken vehicle. Some had said, before the case looking into his disappearance went cold, that William hadn't seemed intoxicated when he had left the club alone in his car. So if that's to be believed, how he ended up driving his car into the pond could still be a mystery. But amazingly, the submerged vehicle had been visible on Google Maps since as early as 2007. It had taken until 2019 for anyone to spot it. Now check out Scientist Solves the Mystery of the Bermuda Triangle, or watch this instead.